Much better. So yes, today we are going to be ranking all of the 17 demos from the Haunted PS1 demo disc. Before we get started, I just want to say, first off, th this is all my opinion, obviously. And if any of the game developers for any of these demos happen to see this video, and I rank your game low, again, it's my opinion, and I'm not saying that the game is necessarily bad. You'll see as we go further. You can look on my channel, I played every one of these demos, there's a video for each one. Some of them are two demos per video, because one might have been shorter or whatever else. So if you want to know like why I rated the game low, or why I rated the game high, even though you're like, I love that one, why do you place it in 16th place? Watch my video, you can see how I experienced the game, it might help you with not being as mad at me. So we have a set of all of the games right down here, and we're going to rank them straight from 1 through 17, which is probably not what the creator of the demo disc really wanted you to do, but we're doing it anyways. So the first game is Until Big Light. So I had a little bit of an issue with that game, mostly that like, the reading and stuff seemed like it went on for a little while, like there wasn't a whole lot to do in the demo. But it really started to build up to something. I, again, these are demos, and I felt like it was really leaning up to something bigger. We'll go ahead and put it in the middle for now. We'll put it like somewhere around seven, and we'll move it around later as we go. If you guys have ever seen Ghost of a Tale, I did a playthrough of that a long time ago. And Until Big Light gave me like a horror-esque version of that game, like the same feeling. So I actually kind of want to look into the full game. All right, so next up we have Tasty Ramen, and man, screw this game. It, it's a really cool idea, and I just hate it. I'm just salty because it managed to actually scare the crap out of me despite looking so bright and happy. Oh, oh, oh. oh God! Like, this game looked so non-threatening, yet it scared the ever-living crap out of me. Just for that, because in my opinion, it was the scariest game on this whole disc. It, it gets to go up higher than Until Big Light. We're gonna place it in like third for now. Again, we're gonna move things around as we go. This is where I start to make people a little mad. Snowy Castle, which by the way, there wasn't any logo for the game, so I just have like a screenshot here that the developer posted on Twitter. Um, I also learned the game isn't called Snowy Castle. It's called Snowy Castle Game, which is just weird. I also learned that there's a company called Snowy Castle Games, so this is one letter short of a copyright infringement. But if you guys have seen that, th there wasn't a lot to the game. You were just running around relighting candles. I couldn't find all of them. I searched everywhere. And I, I never finished that demo. That was one of the only ones I didn't finish. Because, like, there, was there wasn't really much to it. You're just running around relighting candles. Like, the world was really pretty. And you had this, like, light in your hand that was really fun to flip around. But that was kind of it. So you get to go into 12th for now. Alright, so next up is Sauna 2000. And honestly, I want to do this game expecting something a little more relaxed. It was not that. So this game did manage to scare the crap out of me. Um, it... <laughs> As somebody who's actually chopped wood for... Okay. It didn't go over too well. It, it gets to go higher up on the list. Now, we're not just rating these games based on did they manage to scare me. Again, you would think that would be the case because they're like horror games. And that is a huge criteria. Was it actually horror? But not every game goes for jump scares. I'm not just looking for that. But this game really did give me a good feeling of unease. However, despite my issues with Until Big Light, I feel like Until Big Light had more of a cohesive, like, I don't know, story or narrative to it that I enjoyed a lot more. So this gets to go just under that. There's really not much to say about Orange County. Again, there was no logo or anything for Orange County, so again, I just grabbed a screenshot. It it was just like, you, you were just like skateboarding through a town. As far as I could tell, nothing horror-like happened in the demo. I couldn't find anything else to do. Like, I got like, basically killed by the police, and that was pretty much it. There, hit me. Do it. Okay. You know, it's hard to say. Was it better than Snowy Castle or not? They're both games that didn't really have a whole lot to do in them. I don't really know where I would want to place it. I think just because of the mechanics. Because you were skateboarding around, and if you enjoy skateboarding games, it's a bit better. Um, I'm, I'm going to place it above, above Snowy Castle. Again, there wasn't a whole lot to the game, but it was still interesting. Like The mechanics were kind of nice. So we're going to place that just above Snowy Castle. All right, this is a tough one. So the game was really interesting in the, in the beginning. 
it, it had a really nice start, then it drops you in the woods with no direction. It's really dark with the occasional blue lights, and it drove me absolutely mad. Can you please be where I'm supposed to go? Nope, okay, it just ended. It goes into the sky again! Did both sides of this go into the sky, or did I happen to run the same way as last time? There's a house. There is a house. Oh, thank God, something is happening. To be fair, I was recording a lot of stuff that day, and I was probably doing a little bit too much for me to get thrown into this out of nowhere. I've seen people saying really good things about this game. I've seen a lot of really great responses to this game. But in regards to my experience in the demo, it just wasn't that great. I would love to go back and play it. You know, maybe go through and play the actual full game. Because I feel like it had a lot more going for it, but that just forest scene that lasted like the entire, like, almost the entire video I did on that game, it was just boring. I would say despite that, despite the issues I had with it, it still had more to it than Orange County or Snowy Castle game. So I'm gonna place it just above them. All right, so Nico Yumi. This game was actually fun. It was really weird. I had no idea what was going on the entire time. But I think that was kind of the point you're not supposed to understand. It's like that old uh, PS1 LSD game. I feel like it was heavily inspired by that. It was interesting. I actually really enjoyed it. So... Where do you go? I think I liked it more than Tasty Ramen. That's hard to say. Hey, Strowman did manage to scare the crap out of me more, but Nico Yumi had a lot more of uh, atmospheric, weird vibes. I don't know. Alright, you beat Tasty Ramen. You get to go there. So, killer bees. I could not find anything on this game. I could have gone in game and got a screenshot, but I figured I would pull up the really old Philips game, Killer Bees. From like 1980 something? Yeah, we're just gonna use their artwork instead. I don't know, the game didn't have a whole lot to it. it you were killing bees. It was fun. Yep, we are actually killing bees. Got it. I suppose, you know, we're actually gonna crop this image because we don't need to like, try and squish that whole thing down. But you were just shooting bees. It felt really weird. Eh. There was one part that made me think, oh, it's going to turn around, it's gonna get really horror-like. Because you had that, like, cross with little dude on it that appeared. That, once again, kind of managed to scare me. That was about it. I don't know. Despite that, I still enjoyed it more than Ode to a Moon, but less than Sana, so it gets to go in the middle. Alright, so we have Insomnio, and honestly, this game is kind of what gave me a lot of hype for this demo disc. Until Big Light was the first one that I played, Insomnia was the second, and it actually managed to get me at a few points. It was actually pretty terrifying. You're going through this, like, dream world, and you're traveling between, like, dream to dream to dream. And it was actually pretty nuts. It, it wasn't, like, as out there as Nico Yumi, but it managed to build up, like, that sense of fear, that anxiety a lot better. It was part of the reason that I really wanted to play through the entire demo disc. To be fair, I am not actually claustrophobic, but when it comes to mini horror games, I don't care for being blocked in small enclosed spaces. It gives you that feeling of nowhere to run. Okay. It, it's hard to say it was my favorite. We'll kind of decide that near the end. I will have to say it's going to go in the number one slot for now because I did enjoy it more than Tasty Ramen and Nico Yumi. Again, I'm, I'm looking back at it. I'm not like re-watching my, all my videos and then making this. I'm going off of my memory of what I thought of the game at the time. And I don't know, looking back, I think I like it more than the others. Maybe I didn't say that during the video, but it was also the second one that I played. All right, there's not much to say on this one. Heartworm, we're just gonna highlight you. We're gonna shrink you down. We're gonna move you up just slightly to the 17th place tab, and uh, yeah, that's where you get to stay. I just realized I got my games mixed up. I was thinking of the wrong game. My bad. Heartworm still isn't going to be anywhere near the top. The game had some interesting elements to it, but my god, like, you show me a psychology book that took me like five to six minutes to read all the way through, 
and there was no point to it. It didn't give us any relevance to the main story. Oh, hey. If you wanted to give us a background in psychology, you could have given us like some keynotes or something. I thought I would have to read the whole thing. I thought there might have been a hint in there or something, and maybe there was. Because I couldn't ever figure anything out with that game. I, I get the feeling it's like going to be like a big puzzle game, and again, I'm not a huge puzzle game person. That's probably part of the reason why I'm ranking this a bit lower. But tank controls already lose some loses some points for me. And I, I don't know. The game felt like it had so much ready and built up. Like it had so much ready to go for it. And this never went anywhere. I'd also encourage the developer to maybe look into psychology a bit more. Maybe they're like a psychology major, major and I just sound stupid. But like I said in one part of the video, when she had all of those mental issues and they released her home for seven days, I'm not an expert, but that just doesn't sound right. But just for now, we're going to place it right here on 14th. And we'll see if it gets moved around later. All right, so filth breed. This game was probably the one that got me the most. It really, like, captured the horror elements I was looking for in this demo. I also didn't really expect it to give me a gun off the bat. And while the monsters themselves weren't that freaky, they, they were tall and they would shake a lot, they weren't really that much of a threat, like, so long as you had a, a distance between you and them. I think the only time I got hurt was when I like stared at that creepy face thing in the closet and then they just surrounded me from all sides. There were like two or three of them that came at me. Uh, excuse me. Friend or foe? Yeah. Fuck. Uh, 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 reload, please. God. Oh, I hate this. Despite it being rather easy, it still filled me with a lot of anxiety. And I understand, I don't do a lot of horror games, so that's not the hardest thing to do. But it definitely gets a higher ranking on this list. So the question is, did I enjoy Filth Breed more than Nukio, Nico Yumi Insomnio or Tasty Ramen? Alright, so yeah, it, it, it's taking uh, Tasty Ramen's spot for third place for now. Like, yes. Tasty Ramen really did to get, manage to get to me, probably more than any of the other games. But, I don't know, Filth Breed just had this air to it that really freaked me out really well. And, I don't know, I think it deserves third. Bat Tom Batula! I, another game that didn't have a logo. At least none that I could find. Uh, I don't know what to say about this game. Like, it wasn't awful. I, fe I feel like the main game would have a lot more to it. But it was not one of those games where it feels like a walking simulator with extra steps. If you get what I mean by that, like, yeah, you're, you're looking for certain things that you can feed to this plant and possibly getting other endings. But to me, it really felt like you're walking around for a long period of time doing nothing until you finally uncover something that changes up the entire atmosphere. I will say the idea of having to stare into the darkness to wait for the creature to come out, the really freaky creature, was a really cool idea. Oh, okay, so we had to stare into the nothingness. That's what I was guessing from the letter. Okay. This guy's freaky. And I liked the dreamscape part of the game. See, this is where it starts to get a little bit trickier. I think I'm gonna have to place it... Underneath Until Big Light and Sauna. And Killer Bees. So it's gonna be right here at number 9. Now again, there wasn't a whole lot to Killer Bees. I do feel kind of bad for placing it above this game. But at the same time, like, I still enjoyed... Oh, wrong layer. I, I still enjoyed the game a lot more. I had a better experience with it, even if it was a really... just odd idea of shooting bees. It reminds me, if you guys have ever seen it, there's a movie called Ants, with a Z. It's really old. We own it on DVD. It was a terrible movie. But it was based on the idea of ants basically working together to kill humans because they like destroyed their hive. The I this the premise of ants, this regular ants, they're not giant or anything, of these regular ants like wreaking havoc on this town was ridiculous. And I feel like the same thing with the bees. Now, it, to be fair, bees are arguably a lot more damaging than uh, ants are, in my opinion. But still, it's a weird premise to be killing him with a gun. Give me like a fog, you know, raised poison or something. 
but I still think it's better than Fat Tumbatula. All right, so next up is Erasure. The it's really hard to rank this game. Because I feel like no matter where I put it, I'm going to make somebody mad. Again, there's no logo for that game either. I don't know. If I had to just off the bat, it's going to go It's, it's going to go right underneath, um, right above O2 a Moon, underneath Fatum Batula. You know what? No, it's going to go above Fatum Batula. I, I just, I, I enjoyed the game. It was really interesting. You're like activating these like simulation pods that these people are in. And you're kind of like trying to fix what's going on inside the simulation, whether it's to help them or not. Sometimes you're, you're like you're trying to catch one guy who's like breaking into the system. And it had one or two little scares in it. The ending was really freaky. It also played hell on OBS. OBS did not like capturing that game, so I had to put up footage of ferrets to fill in a blank gap. What the hell? I don't know, it wasn't bad, it was interesting. The the controls and the way that you're like doing the hacking and stuff still didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but I don't know, it wasn't bad. All right, so next up is Effigy. This game really felt like they were trying to make a new Doom or like Quake game. Ironically, I am wearing a, a Quake shirt right now. It didn't feel like it was up to par with either of those games, Despite it being going for like the PS1 aesthetic, in the end, I didn't have to kill anything. I learned I could just run. I didn't, there, there was no reason to sit there and kill the enemies, I could just run away. I feel like, to the developer, they need to have some sort of way to like gate the player off to where they have to kill things. Maybe make the enemies faster or simply more threatening in a way that they can block you off and you have to at least fight some of them. Because in the beginning I was, and the game was actually pretty challenging. But when I learned that you can just run stupid fast and just sprint away from them in order to continue in the game, there wasn't really much to it at that point. I feel like I would have a lot more fun with it if I would have stayed and fought, but I also wouldn't have got as far because, my god, I really sucked at it. Now, despite the flaws that I had mentioned, I feel like I still enjoyed my time with it. Looking back, I might have talked some more, like, I might have been more bored during the video itself, but looking back, it really wasn't bad. It was a really neat idea. So I think it has to go above Killer Bees. I know that. I enjoyed the gameplay of it more than Killer Bees. What was better, Effigy or Sauna 2000? I feel like just because Sauna 2000 felt like complete, it felt like a really like more polished experience. I'm gonna have to put that above it, but uh, FAG gets to go right underneath Sauna. Oh, I forgot we're gonna have to rank this game. Dread Delusion was honestly one of the coolest ones on here. It felt like almost like a Morrowind or Oblivion-like game, but without the really populated cities and quests. It felt like it was a lot more simplistic than either of those games, with a huge horror element thrown into it. I like the idea of the world. You're talking to these like clockwork gods, basically. Got another elevator. Hi, elevator. Are you gonna take me to another talking machine? Uh, there are machines here. I don't know if they talk. And a girl that looks like basically a ghost. I feel like, as somebody who is more used to more modern systems, who have, you know, quest markers and stuff like that, that hurt my experience with this game a little bit, as I do prefer games like Skyrim and Oblivion with quest markers, over Murrowind that doesn't, still waiting for that uh, Murrowind remake to release. But all in all, it was honestly one of the best I've played. I think it needs to go above Tasty Ramen. Tasty Ramen was a great game, and if I was going for like a more jokey kind of thing, I'd be like, yeah, Tasty Ramen, first place. But realistically, I enjoyed this a lot more. So now I have to move all of these down. <laughs> you know what, instead of moving all of them down right now, what we're gonna do is, just to make my life easier, we're gonna poke that over there. All right, so we're moving on to Dead Heat, and this is the game I thought I was doing earlier, but I had gotten the game as mixed up. Dead Heat was just like, you're going here, you're going in 17th. This game wasn't good. And I really feel bad because like whoever made the game put a lot of time into it i don't like being this like harsh critic on these games but i have to be honest here and i did not enjoy this at all you're playing as what feels like two very generic characters that were inspired by the i zombie tv show which actually isn't a bad show by the way the, the camera angles were awful the controls were awful there was no really way to put you in the right direction the menu was completely broken for me 
Uh, press enter to interact with evidence. Got it. Enter does nothing. We got the hover over it. Press enter to turn off space to enter. What? I can't do anything. Uh, uh, no buttons are working. Tab works. Again, the full game could not have that menu issue, but it did on the demo disc. I feel like just because of all the terrible direction and I mean, I didn't even have to find out. I don't, I still don't know to, to this day where I would go to get the safe code because you could just guess it. Like I just typed in a, like a crap ton of numbers and pressed enter. And at one point, all of those numbers, I managed to get the code correct that or I broke the game's code by putting in too many numbers and the safe opened for me. Like, I don't know, the, the game wasn't fun at all. It's it, I, There's a lot of games on this list that I would love to revisit and look at the actual full release of the game. I feel like Dead Heat's one game I'm gonna be happy not to look back at. That is straight up, like, stolen art. I swear that rabbit is like an actual Disney thing. All right, so literally, I just looked up Disney Thumper art because Thumper is that exact rabbit right there. It looks like either they just looked up clip art of Thumper and just downloaded it and put it on the box, or they like redrew Thumper themselves. Okay, so our last game, A Place Forbidden. It didn't stick in my head as much as a lot of the other games that I played. And it might be because there wasn't anything super ominous about it. Like, yeah, it was freaky, I'll give it that. Wearing it without the flashlight and stuff. But once you entered a room and made sure there was nothing freaky in the room, you kind of felt safe the entire time to go ahead and explore and try to complete the puzzles or stuff like that. The puzzles were interesting. I like the idea where it tells you to think like a librarian and yada yada. But I don't know what place it deserved. Alright, I'm gonna have to say I enjoyed it more than Effigy. It was certainly better than Effigy. But... I don't think I enjoyed it more than Sauna. You know what? No. There was mo there, there was more to A Place Forbidden. It felt more complete. So it is going to take Sauna's place. Alright, so that is it. In the end, we go from Dead Heat, The Heartworm, Snowy Castle, Orange County. Which, this- I feel like this kind of shows you, at least it really represents to me, how good this demo disc was. I expected Orange County to be a lot higher up by the end. And the fact that it's in 14th kind of shows that like a lot of the games going up were still good. Just because Orange County plays in the 14th place doesn't mean it's a bad game. It just means I didn't enjoy the experience as much as the other ones going up. We have Ode to a Moon, we have Erasure, uh, Fat Tumbatula, Killer Bees, Effigy in 9th place, Sonic 2008, Place Forbidden in 7th, and once again, like, when I'm just trying to think off the top of my head, I would think A Place Forbidden will be in the top five. But when I go back and look at all of them, like, it's it's down in seventh because there were just so many good games on here. Looking forward, we have Until Big Light, and then the top five, Tasty Ramen, which when I first made this list, I thought that would be in the top three. Then we move on to Dread Delusion, then Filth Breed in third, Nico Yumi in second, and finally Insomnio in first. These games all set out to do different things. They weren't all seeking to be the best horror game or the best PS1 style game made in 2019 and 2020. They, they were all seeking out to make their own thing. And even down to the game I enjoyed the least, Dead Heat, I can't make that. I, I can't make games. None of these games are within my skill level to make. Again, this is all my opinion. Uh, feel free guys, let me know down below what if you would rank this any differently everyone's gonna have different experiences with this and i would like to hear from some of the other people that have made you know videos and stuff on these games that have played through the entire demo disc it'd be interesting to see where they rank these at like i feel like some people might put filth breed at the top or maybe taste drama or dead delusion at the top but i i feel like insomnio had the biggest impact me on me on it, throughout the whole demo going forward so it, it definitely took first place for me. I know this video wasn't entirely funny, haha. Ha. Maybe I'll throw a, a meme in here. A future me, do something with that. But I just wanted to kind of wrap up the whole series. It was a long series. I didn't entirely set out with the demo disc series to make it that long, it ended up being 11 episodes. I think 11, it might have been 12. Yeah, I just really enjoyed the experience. So I figured I would do one video, one last thing to wrap up the entire thing. Yesterday, the last episode released, and this is the last thing you guys are going to hear on this, at least as far as YouTube videos go. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed, feel free to like the video and subscribe down below. 
and hopefully I will see you all next time. Bye. Bye.